rolling, 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 rolling. This morning from Greensboro, Roland Martin is on the phone. Good morning, Roland. Yes, sir, Tom. So what you doing in Greensboro? Morning. Well, I was here in Greensboro, actually, in Winston-Salem last night uh, for the Get Out the Vote rally, uh, the Moral a revival with Reverend William Barber, Bishop uh, Walter Mack at Union Baptist Church. We live streamed it on Roland Martin Unfiltered, so you can actually go to my YouTube, Facebook, and Periscope channels to check that out. And also yesterday, uh, before that, Reverend Barber spoke at North Carolina A&T, where the students led a souls to the polls, S-O-L-E-S. Yeah. You know the, Republic, the Republicans refused to put an early voting location on the campus, so the students walked two miles, two miles, the early voting location, uh, and so we also uh, covered that, and we'll have that tonight. And then a uh, shout out to Howard University; I was at their homecoming on Saturday, uh, and so hanging out there uh, as well. So quite the busy weekend, uh, and of course everything is uh, tied to the election. We are eight days away, and there are some huge races taking place across the country. Most folks, of course, are focused on. Uh, of course, uh, Andrew Gillum in Florida, Stacey Abrams in Georgia, and Ben Jealous in Maryland, uh, who are running for uh, governor's seat. But, Tom, you could potentially have uh, 55 or 56 black members of Congress, depending upon what happens uh, on November 6th. And three of the folks who are running are joining us right now, all sisters. First, Ayanna Presley, she is running for in Massachusetts. Uh, Lucy McBath, she is running for Congress in Georgia. And Johanna Hayes, uh, former Teacher of the Year, running for Congress in Connecticut. All of us joining us right now. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, First off, uh, I want to start with you, Lucy. Uh, of course, uh, we know uh, many folks that know you and your story. Your son, uh, uh, Jordan, who was uh, shot and killed, uh, that story just got national attention. And most folks who know about your work with gun, uh, you know, gun control. But uh, why did you decide to say, you know what, I need to have my voice uh, in the United States Congress? Because, Roland, I recognize I'd already been working with our federal legislators and state legislators around the country. I haven't written any bills or, you know, created any amendments, but I'd already been doing the work. And then specifically after Parkland and all our children, you know, together, they were coming together to stand up and fight for their own lives. I just, I'd had enough. And I figured, you know, it would be a tragedy not to stand up and try to fight to really make a difference on an on internally we'd been i'd been building this big external movement but we need people on the inside as well to be able to create the change uh, uh and johanna you're a former teacher of the year and we were seeing teachers all across the country running for public office uh in oklahoma uh in west virginia they have been upsetting incumbents left and right and you're running of course in connecticut yes um i think we all have the same motivation i decided to do this because, you know, I'm teaching young kids that they have to do their part and they have to work hard, you know, and be productive in society and they have to behave in a certain type of way. And we're seeing just the opposite of that played out. And, you know, I just asked myself a very simple question, who will speak for them? You know, who will make sure that their issues and their concerns are brought to the forefront and that, you know, the future is protected for them? Uh, Yana, you shocked uh, Democrats all across the country when you took down uh, a, uh, a Democrat uh, who was in leadership in the uh, primary. Uh, and, of course, you were the uh, first woman of color on the Boston City Council. Now you could become the first woman of color to represent Massachusetts and the U.S. House of Representatives. Indeed, the first person of color ever uh, in the 230-year history. Um, of our congressional delegation, I ran because there was a lot of talk about the need to resist and to affront the draconian policies of Trump, um, but I ran because the Massachusetts 7th is one of the most diverse and unequal districts um, in the country and certainly in our delegation, and I wanted to send a message that a reliable, quote-unquote, progressive vote simply was not enough. Uh, the systemic inequalities and disparities in this district existed long before Donald Trump descended an escalator at Trump Tower. <laughs> and I ran because I wanted to do something and tell the truth about that from Cambridge, which is where MIT and Harvard are, are uh, housed, to Roxbury, blackest part of the district. Life expectancy drops by 30 years and household income by $50,000. Sybil? 
I was just wondering in terms of uh, the uh, the support that you're getting, not only obviously you're going to get it from black women, but are you feeling the support from other uh, diverse supporting groups and communities in, in Lucy, either? Lucy, you first. Lucy, you first. Oh, absolutely. Collective PAC, Higher Heights. I mean, a lot of um, very strong organizations that have really invested in my race, as I'm sure they've invested in, you know, um, other races as well. And I could not be happier with the grassroots campaigns, um, the organizations that have really come out, they have really made a huge difference in helping me in terms of my ground campaign, canvassing. I have vir- people that are doing virtual phone banking, organizations that are doing virtual phone banking for me around the country. So I think the support has been tremendous. This blue wave has, has gone even beyond what we saw with uh, the 2017 special election here in Georgia with John Ossoff. So I couldn't be more grateful for the help that I'm getting. Johanna? Well, for me, I could not do this without the support of other communities. My district is about 73% white. And we also have never had, Democrats have never sent a person of color to Congress. I did not have the Democratic endorsement. And I had to go out there and really work hard. And I can tell you that people in, we have five of the largest urban cities. We have rural communities. We have affluent suburban communities, just a very dynamic and diverse um, district. And I came out of the primary winning 37 of the 41 towns in this district. So people in other communities are definitely, my message is resonating with them, and they recognize that, you know, change is a choice, and we have an opportunity here to make some meaningful and powerful change, and, you know, I could not do it with only the communities that are similarly situated. I've gotten, I can tell you that those communities were the first on board, right. you know, to help me when no one else would, when no one else was paying attention, but it has since swelled to this um support that really propels me through, you know, every day. Uh, uh, Yana, uh, of course, you ran uh, against the incumbent, and you ran against black caucus members who supported your opponent uh, over you. Well, you know, I was running for the district, so that was okay. I'm not new to this. I was an aide on the federal level for 16 years and had been on the city council as a top vote getter for three elections. Um, but I've been on city council for eight years. So I knew that I was going to be embarking upon something that would be lonely and uphill and bruising, and there were many moments where that was uh, true. However, uh, the polls had us down by 13 points, and we won by 17. (laughs) Um, In fact, by 59,815 votes in upseating um, a a 20-year progressive Democratic incumbent And I keep saying that progressive thing because I ran in a dark blue state in a dark blue district, um, and uh, that was incredibly disruptive. Um, But we did build a broad and diverse grassroots coalition, and every community they said was unlikely showed up because we resourced our field. We met people in community. We demonstrated to people that we gave a damn about them, and they gave a damn about democracy. And what I'm proudest of is 250 incarcerated black men at MCI Norfolk who endorsed our candidacy and campaign and organized from behind the wall a minimum of three family members to get to the polls on the outside on Election Day. Um, I also want want to say we're all supporting each other. We've campaigned for each other as well, Johanna, Lucy, and myself. Folks, Ayala Presley, Massachusetts, Lucy McBath running in Georgia, Johanna Hayes running in Connecticut, just three of the black women uh, who are trying to make history this November. Let's do it. Ayala Presley, I don't know if you are a baseball fan, but you might want to thank Tom Joyner for the Boston <laughs> oh, Red go. Sox yes, win. Yes, <laughs> yes, for sure. I'll take it. Really? I'm from the shy originally. Y'all oh, are giving me like a long time. We love it. Really, Sybil. Really, really you took this time. 